Valley Forge National Historical Park is about 3,600 acres today. It was before that a state park. It was started in 1893, and this house was actually turned into a historic site in 1879 to commemorate what happened here. This building was built in the 1760s for the Potts family, who operated the forges and mills along Valley Creek. And Isaac Potts owned this house in particular, and he was not living here when the general arrived. Uh, general Washington was able to rent this building from a relative of Isaac. At that point, General Washington moved in with a staff of about 25 people. The first room is a working room for Washington staff, a few chairs in there that are set up for work area, perhaps you could eat in there, and then we have the next room set up as a private office for General Washington. And then up there it's set up as the three bedrooms, a private one for the general and Mrs. Washington, a uh, room for some of the aide-de-camps like Alexander Hamilton. One is set up as a guest room for a general who visited here in May, which could have been a rotating room, and there's a third floor which would have served for maybe extra sleep space for some of the staff or servants. Outside is the detached kitchen, separated from the main house by the breezeway, and that is where the laundry, the cooking, and the baking all took place. So Valley Forge is an encampment. It is not a battlefield. It is where the Continental Army came to in December of 1777. The British had captured Philadelphia previous to that in the fall of 1777, and Valley Forge is important in American history as both a myth, where it is seen as one of the tougher times of the American Revolution and a symbol of the soldiers' perseverance. The other side of it is this was a training ground. This is where Washington had time to turn his Continental Army, which was made up of, you know, from the 13 states, into more of a professional army, because this was a long haul. It was an eight-year war against the British. Yeah.